Happy Sabbath to you all. I'd just like to welcome one and all to this Zoom meeting. And if those who are watching on YouTube, welcome. Amen. Sister Smith, well, nice to have you. Brother and Sister Scarlett. And I think we have Sharon Crosdale. Welcome to our meeting. We'll begin by singing the hymn 155, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. Today's scripture reading will be taken from Genesis 2, 15 to 17, and it reads, And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayst freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, Thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. At this time, we'll have Brother Scarlett to do our pastoral prayer. Brother Scarlett. Okay, let us pray. Praise waited for thee, O God in Zion. Unto thee shall the vow be performed. O thou that bringest, hearest prayers, unto thee shall all flesh come. Eternal Father who art in heaven, it is with humility that I approach your throne of grace today on behalf of your saints. We come with nothing in our hands. We appreciate the fact that we are all sinned and come short of your glory. But we come to thee now asking for your mercies, for your forgiveness, for your pardon, and we ask that you will 
have mercy upon us, hear our prayers, and perform your blessings. We realize that in course of the week, we have all had our difficulties, our heartaches, our problems. We come now to say sorry for offending you, sorry for sinning against you, and we ask for your pardon. We pray as we wait upon you that we will hear you speaking to us saying, this is the way, walking in it when you turn to the right hand and to the left. We ask on this your holy day that you will give us your spirit of meekness, that you will give us your spirit of forgiveness, knowing that having come to you, you will fulfill your promise and you will never cast any of us away. Please now be with us, Lord, as we wait on you. Accept the praises we bring thee. Grant us your perfect peace. And may we go from here today feeling forgiven, confident in your promise that all who come to you, you will no wise cast away. Hear thus the praises we bring thee. Be we the person who will present your message today. Endure him with power from on high. And may we hear you speaking to us through his presentation. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 We will now have our first meditational item of the day. Hymn number 317, 317, Lead Me to Calvary.
at this time. We would like to take the opportunity to open the floor to you all to give you a chance to share with us some of those watching online and around the world the goodness that the Lord has bestowed upon you of late. You know, it's always an encouragement to hear how the Lord is blessing other people. I know that there's been times when I am in a particular place with the Lord where just to hear somebody else's blessings is a blessing for me. And so I would encourage you, as the Lord has blessed you, don't keep it up to yourself, but share. Tell of the good things that the Lord has been doing for you lately. I can see some people looking at one another thinking, oh, should I, should I say? Over to you all, over to you all. You know, at this stage is where people normally say, you mean to say that God is not doing anything for any of you? Well, I know full well that God is blessing you. The question is, who will who will tell of the blessings that God has been blessing them with? Oh God! Oh God! So I feel like there's so many blessings I could. Mm. Um, but I will give you an example of just a couple. So um, earlier on in our Sabbath school lesson, there was a question asked about help meets and every married man should have raised his hand. But there was a bit of a slow, s- slow movement for many people to, to put their hands up. And um, I would just like to just really testify that as a, as a help meet, um, we often, Many women, and I talked about this before in some of the sermons that I preach, but a lot of women claim that their husbands don't listen to them or their husbands don't communicate with them. And I feel like every woman at some time in her marital journey can feel with conviction that she's not being listened to or that she doesn't have the opportunity to be heard. And I was one of those women for a very long time, but I, for a very long time, have been praying about a better way to communicate in my marriage and in my home. And by the will of God, he has given both Otis and I the spirit of communication in a way that we've never had before. So we have been walking regularly. It doesn't seem like a big thing, but we walk regularly. And on those walks, we have such sweet communion and such sweet conversation that it is a real blessing. So all the times that I wish I had had the opportunity to talk about some things or say some things or have heard Otis even when he had something to say to me, and I didn't or couldn't or wouldn't, now God is making me realise what that communication should look like and how that should be manifested in my relationship. And so every single time we have a revelation of this kind in our communication about all sorts of things, so family matters, our long-term aspirations, individual challenges, it gives me hope and encouragement every single time. And when we don't walk, so sometimes we're tired or we're weary, I really miss it because it is the closest that I have to my communication with God. It's like on that kind of same level regards the purity of it and the essence of truth and humility that comes in those conversations. So I would just like to testify that for many women out there that might be experiencing a lack of communication in their marriage, find an avenue, find an opportunity where you can invite God into your conversation with your husband and you will be heard. And similarly, you will have a chance to listen. Amen, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, I'm sure that you would also be nervous if your spouse rocks up and starts talking about you. And if you as a husband and your wife rocks up and starts saying, well, you know, this thing happened with my husband or my wife, you might be sitting there nervously for a little while as well. But praise the Lord for the thing that he is doing in our home. Thank you, Suki, for sharing. Anybody else? Anybody else? While you all think about yourself, like Suki, I could literally take the rest of this service and half of the AY just telling of the, the 
the words escape me, and you know I have a lot of words. Just the wondrous nature of God. The wondrous nature of God. And you know, so God is doing so many things in my life right now. It's just amazing. Um, I left my job, as you all know, about a year ago, just over a year ago. Um, uh, 14 months ago, I left my job, my full-time job, which paid very well. And I decided to work for myself one month before um, before the pandemic and lockdown. And I had nothing. And I had some ideas and some plans in my head, but I had nothing. And long story short, you know, this week, I have now I have um, two premises. I have a premise in Birmingham. I have a premise of my almost of my own in Wolverhampton. And when I sit in my office and I look around at what God has made, it, it it's amazing. It's amazing. It's truly amazing. And and I haven't even done anything yet. I've not even really started. But God, God is blessing in an awesome, awesome way. And you know what's amazing is when you think you're doing something um, spectacular or special, but then when you get to understand it, God had had this thing in in line, in the works, on the conveyor belt for, for months and months and months and years, for months and years. So you just come to discover this blessing. But you recognize that God had had this thing waiting for you for, for a long time. Glory to God. Glory to God. God is unbelievable unbelievable i'll give it back to you now anybody would like to give a testimony or shall i continue Brother i'd Martin. like to say i'd like to say that uh for the lockdown we i in particular spent a lot of time doing a lot of things finding different activities um some not very important just you know, just spending time, probably wasting time. But during the lockdown, the restrictions placed upon all of us, I've spent more time studying the Word of God. And the more I study it is, the more I recognize who I am to God and what He did for me, what He's done, what He's continuing to do, and, and why He died, you know, why His Son died for us. And that magnitude has dawned on me more and more every day when I hear people worrying about things. The Bible said we shouldn't have fear as Christians, we should have hope. And that hope gives me strength, gives me um, solace when things seem dark. But it makes me reflect deeper on his word that I draw closer to him. So I don't feel fearful. I'm looking forward with hope that whatever is to come, God is in the middle of all of it and he's steering it and I trust in him. And I'm asking everyone to keep praying for me that I will hold on to God's word. And I'm also praying for everyone too that even our hours of need and despair, that we have a hope and God is there for us. That's my testimony, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Just before anybody else comes in, I just wanna encourage and say that, you know, don't be discouraged when you find yourself in a, a hard time or a difficult time or a low time or a challenging relationship or a challenging work situation. Just trust in God because in my experience, God is in the midst of the valley. In the same way that we experience God on the mountaintop, God is right there in the valley seeking to utilize the valley to be a blessing to you. So don't don't let go of God. God is always there seeking to bless you. Would anybody else like to testify of the wonderful thing that God has is doing for them or has done for them recently? Or shall we move on with our service? We'll continue with our service. And our next meditation is hymn number 158.
speaker today is Elva Lawrence and Elva Lawrence is one of the leaders in Bilston. He's a young man in my eyes anyway. He's a young man and he's the husband of one wife and uh, you know he loves the Lord. He is someone who you can tell that the Lord can use because he is dedicated to what he set his mind to do for God. And therefore, we're very happy to have Elder Lawrence with us. And he someone who always wants to bring us closer to the Lord. And we know today will be no exceptional when he will speak to us 
by allowing the Holy Spirit to guide them. And so therefore, the next voice that you will hear is that of Elder Lawrence. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, church. Um, I'd like to thank um, Elder Griffiths for his uh, words and uh, thank the church for giving me the opportunity to uh, uh, deliver the Lord's message. But before I begin, can we bow our heads for a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, Lord, I give you thanks and praise for uh, the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us for keeping us safe throughout uh, another week of uh, trials and tribulations. Father, I ask that you will uh, increase the Holy Spirit at this time as I deliver your word and that myself will decrease. I pray, dear Father, that uh, the words that I speak, that your children will hear uh, a word directly from you. Continue to bless and to guide us, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Our scripture reading is a well-known passage uh, within the creation story. Uh, we know that after God created the world and mankind, he instructed our four parents that they were free to eat from all the trees in the beautiful garden, except for one, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. This tree had a warning and a consequence attached to it. Um, verse 17 of Genesis chapter 2 says, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eat thereof, thou shalt surely die. When Eve was tempted by the devil, her response went one step further. Uh, Genesis 3, verses 2 and 3. And the woman said to the servant, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. We were created to live forever. We were the crowning act of God's creation. In Revelation 4.11, uh, it says, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power. For thou hast created all things. For thy pleasure they are and were created. Now, Adam and Eve failed the test. So they were cast out of the Garden of Eden. But God, in his wisdom, made a way. Um, yeah, God, in his wisdom, made a way to restore us back to himself. Uh, I've entitled today's message, Lest I Forget. When sin came into the world, the sacrificial system was implemented. We first first hear of a sacrificial offering in the story of Cain and Abel, where uh, Cain brought the first fruits of the ground and Abel brought uh, the firstling of his flock. And we know that uh, Cain's offering was rejected, but Abel's offering was accepted. What is Easter? As the world celebrating Easter at this time. Do they truly know the meaning of Easter? Nowadays, Easter seems to be more about chocolate eggs, chocolate bunnies, and other decorations. This week I even heard of 
uh, an Easter tree. Um, so people are really um, taking this Easter celebration to, to make a, a big thing of it, more to, I suppose, more to commercialize it. Is Easter more of a secular festival or a Christian celebration? The dictionary, the dictionary defines Easter as an annual Christian festival in commemoration of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, observed on the first Sunday after the full moon, after the vernal equinox, uh, which usually happens at the start of spring. Uh, Wikipedia uh, makes some links to Easter to, uh, uh, to something called Easter, which is E-O-S-T-R-E, -E, uh, which happens to be um, a pagan festival. Um, and it tells you that it's a German goddess of dawn uh, whose symbol was the rabbit, which symbolized fertility. It's also linked um, with Good Friday, uh, which we know as uh, commemorating the crucifixion of Christ. Do people know the significance of what took place? Do they genuinely appreciate the events that occurred over 1900 years ago? But the question is, what does Easter mean to you? Or what should it mean to us? The plan of salvation was for Jesus to redeem us from sin. He came to show us the Father, his love for us, and how we are to live and how we are to treat each other. Luke 4, verses 17 to 19, uh, tells us of the time. Um, I'll read it for you. It says, And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah, uh, this hymn referring to Jesus Christ. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and to recover, and the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. We know that throughout his time on earth, Jesus fulfilled all the prophecies pertaining to himself by preaching, teaching, using parables, also healing, showing compassion and being an example for all believers to follow. I want us to turn our minds and focus on the last few days before his crucifixion. It was about around about the time of the Jewish Passover. Jesus knew his time was short. Jesus first initiated the service of humility, what we know to be our foot washing, uh, followed by the Last Supper, which is a communion service, uh, when he explained the significant where he explained the significance of what he was about to endure. We are encouraged to do this in memory of his death, which is 1 Corinthians 11, verse 26. When we think about the crucifixion, what comes to mind? Being nailed to the cross, both his hands and his feet. Uh, Christ being betrayed by his friends and associates. We know that Peter denied him. We know Judas, the sellout, betrayed him with a kiss. And also the other disciples ran away in fear of their own lives. Whilst on earth, Jesus was in constant communication with 
with his heavenly father. Matthew 26, 36 to 38, records Jesus and the disciples going to Gethsemane. And it reads, Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto the disciples, Sit here while I go and pray. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, which we know to be James and John, and began to be sorrowful and very weary, heavy, sorry. Then saith he unto them, My soul is extremely sorrowful, even unto death. Christ began to experience the separation uh, that sin, um, sin separates us from God. And Christ began to experience that separation as the weight of our sin, the sin of the whole world back then and even now was being transferred onto him. Peter, James and John fell asleep instead of praying in support of Christ and what he was about to face. Um, even though the disciples were with Christ um, all through his ministry, they truly didn't comprehend um, what Christ was about to face. They didn't truly understand when he said that he will be crucified and will rise again the third day. I don't know about you, but I suffer with a similar condition to Peter, James and John, as they couldn't keep awake. Um, my body, when it's tired, um, will slow down or will shut down. Uh, and I find it hard to stay awake, especially uh, when it's dark or when I'm relaxed, when I'm tired. I've even fallen asleep whilst driving twice. I praise God for his protection as I am still here uh, to tell the tale of his providence and protection on my life. I encourage you all to know your body and to know your physical limitations. Jesus' trial was swift, like a tornado. He was arrested by the servants of the high priest and he was tried at night by the high priest. He was retried in the morning by the governor, Pilate, and within two days, uh, he was crucified. Christ endured humiliation from the crowd that surrounded him. And potentially a lot of these people in the crowd were people he, he would have preached to uh, over the, the, the many different uh, areas, the many different mountains where he was preaching and teaching and people who he may have even healed. The crowd, uh, yeah, he was humiliated by the crowd that uh, surrounded him. They mocked him, they spat at him, laid hands on him whilst he was in the custody of the, at the high priest's palace. And some began to spit at him and to cover his face and to buffet him and to say unto him, prophesy. And the servants did strike him with the palms of their hands. That was recorded in Mark 14, verse 65. In 2004, uh, I watched a film called The Passion of the Christ. And personally, when I watched that film, it, um, it really opened my eyes to the the, the gravity or the, the severity of the punishment that Christ faced. Uh, the scenes of Jesus' trial was <clears throat> particularly memorable as I felt um, disgusted when I saw the, the suffering uh, 
and the scourging that Jesus endured. What is scourging? Uh, a scourge is a Roman implement used to inflict severe bodily punishment. This was no ordinary flogging. Uh, the scourge itself consisted of a handle to which several cords of uh, leather or strap were attached, uh, which were weighted with jagged pieces of metal or even bone to make each blow more painful and effective. The victim was usually tied to a post and blows were applied to the back and to their loins and to their legs. The jagged pieces tore bits of flesh with every strike. It was a way of quickening the death of the person to be crucified. The prophet Isaiah prophesied about the stripes of the Messiah that would bring healing. Isaiah 53, verse 3. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Our Lord was scourged by Pilate twice. Pilate found Jesus to be not guilty of any crime. Um, so he sought to release him, which is why he had the first um, episode of scourging. But the high priest and the crowd, um, they were out for, for blood, more or less. Um, so instead of releasing Jesus, uh, the crowd shouted, crucify him, crucify him. And they asked for Barabbas, uh, a known thief, to be released in his place. Did the Romans kill Jesus is a question I have to ask. The answer to that would be no. The high priests, the elders, and the leaders of his time uh, uh, announced his death when they shouted, crucify him. One word of warning, I would say, beware of the crowd. Mark 15 verses 11 to 13 uh, records, but the chief priests moved the people that they should rather release Barabbas unto them. And Pilate answered and said un unto them, what then shall I do unto him whom ye call the king of the Jews? And they cried again, crucify him. Be careful not to be caught up, not to get caught up in the moment. Over the last few months, we have heard of uh, peaceful protests that go take a drastic turn for the worse because of a, a handful of people that start uh, violent acts where, and then innocent people um, find themselves joining in. They didn't go with the intention to, to be violent or to commit, um, you know, uh, any criminal acts, but they end up following the crowd and committing uh, acts that uh, were not part of their plan. As I say, the second round of scorching for Christ took place when he was sentenced to be crucified. It was customary for people to be scourged before being crucified. And we know that at some point after um, being whipped and scourged, uh, a crown of thorns was pressed upon his head with the thorns piercing his skin and piercing his brow and even his temple. Can you imagine the pain? 
This is some next level torture. We know the cross was then placed on his shoulders and he was led to Golgotha where he was crucified. Um, it, it's pretty difficult to try and get the, the severity and the gravity of the pain um, that Christ endured. But I, I, I hope and pray that as we uh, think about the Easter story and what happened to Christ, um, that we reflect on our part in, in all of this. Some of you may say, well, I wasn't there, but we accept his sacrifice as um, remission for our sins. Sin was imputed to Christ in order that righteousness might be imputed to man, that we may obtain righteousness. Second Corinthians 5, 21 says, for he has made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him by bearing man's sin on the cross. Christ paid our penalty. But I'm glad to say that's not where the story ended. I'm so glad that on the Sunday morning, the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they all record that as the Sabbath ended and dawn approached on the first day of the week, that the two Marys went to the tomb and found it empty. Every time I read the account of Christ's resurrection, um, particularly in Mark 28, verses 5 and 6, where it says, And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. The angel then continues, He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, Come and see the place where the Lord lay. Now, the beginning of verse 6, he's not here for he is risen. Um, it brings to mind um, in the early 1990s, um, Dudley Church, um, we put on, uh, the youth department put on a, a play um, to depict the crucifixion. And the words of the song just keeps ringing in my ears because the chorus says, He's not here, for he is risen. He's not here, we're glad to say. He's not here, for he is risen. Jesus is alive today. And the verse says, I remember that Jesus, he told us, I remember that he said. He said evil men would beat him and kill him. Then he'd come back from the dead then the chorus comes back uh, and the second verse was has it happened has our lord burst from the, the grave has it happened praise to jesus he's alive he's kept his word it's amazing what we can remember from some 25 years ago In summary, what do we think our Lord's death? Do we only think about our Lord's death at Easter and communion services? Remember that we crucify him afresh every day when we sin. We crucify him afresh when we dwell on negative thoughts towards anyone else. We crucify him afresh 
when we use speech to tear people down and not build them up. We crucify him afresh when we fail to show love, kindness, and compassion. When we forget to pray, we crucify him afresh when we fail or refuse to use our talents to benefit others. I encourage everyone that is listening to know God for yourself. Make God a priority in your life by reading, studying his word daily. Let the Holy Spirit transform us into a beacon of light. As I mentioned, the title of this story was derived from the words of the first meditational song. Lest we forget what happened at Gethsemane and Golgotha's Hill. Lest we forget the pain and agony he endured on our behalf. Lest we forget his infinite love for us and his sacrifice. Lead us to Calvary. And I, and I implore you all that as we ponder on the words of today's message, that we will draw closer to God and ask him to fill our lives or fill us with the Holy Spirit that we can share the love that we find in him and the sacrifice that he has made for us. Thank you and amen. 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 I'd like to thank the good um, Lawrence very much for that message. You know, Jesus, you know, what Jesus did for us, lest we forget. And we ask that we will not forget what Christ did for us on the cross, but we will ever have him in our mind and to live for him each day. Thanks again, and Lawrence, for your message of hope and comfort. At this time, we'll close our service with the use of him 184. 184, Jesus paid it all. Jesus, baby, oh.
us pray. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give you peace. Heavenly Father, we thank you for affording us yet another opportunity to live for you and to serve you. I pray that as we think about the death of Christ on our behalf, that we will accept his sacrifice and gift of eternal life. Help us to live for you daily. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 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 Thank you.